Frehen. Frehen. I'm not gonna lie to you, man. When I was booked in to the X Trail, I just thought, ah, oh, for f I was actually like that. For f sake. On your X Trail. Let me tell you why, okay? Why? Why would I buy one of these when it's more expensive than a class leader like the RAV4 or Kia Sportage, which I absolutely love. It's got an anemic engine. We don't need any more of those. This thing literally has emphysema. It couldn't push a trolley down a hill <laughs> on paper. And quite frankly, it just looks like a, an American SUV. It really does. It's not the worst thing, but like, like do, I, do we need another one of those? Do I care? Can I go home to my girlfriend, sit down at the table and say, Monique, I love the car. I can't look her in the eyes and tell her that. That's what I thought. My mind has been changed. And I'm gonna to explain to you throughout this video why my mind has been changed, but this thing is actually pretty sick. I like it. Yeah, it's not as bad as, as you might think. In fact, it's really damn good. I didn't think it'd be that bad, man. That was all you. I'm a pessimist. Now, if you guys wanna see a full in-depth written article on this, check out our website, castles.com. It's going live at the same time as this. And of course, if you guys need the absolute best financing deals tailored for you, click the link below. It'll take you to our website and we work with Driver to get you guys the best financing deals. Jacob, let's get into the review. Let's do it. So we're driving the STL today. I wanted to get into what would be the real main seller of the range. This thing is second from the bottom. There are four models, but it will still cost you just under 44,000 Australian dollars before on-road costs. Jacob, that's a lot of money. It's pretty decent. Yeah, it's like three grand more than the hybrid RAV4, which is sold out for like 24 months. So why would you go for a non-hybrid SUV like this? We'll come back to that. Some of you might buy it because of the looks. It's actually pretty handsome, even if it is very American. You got your daytime running lights up here. It's got a split headlight design, really bright LED light lights with a turning signal there. Look at all this chrome, Jacob. Oh my God, it's so reflective. You can see ourselves in that, it's terrifying. <laughs> You've also got your Nissan badge here. I love the new logo and that's also your radar. This thing has some of the best adaptive cruise control and Nissan's pro pilot system. Essentially, this thing will drive itself down a highway. Come back to that. Look at this grill, Jacob. Beautiful. Grilling yes. itself. And then down the bottom, you've got some I don't know. I don't know. This color looks a bit off and that's a theme that carries on to the interior, at least to me, but I don't know. It's a, it's a handsome car. I kind of like this red, even if it is a bit, bit old timery for me. One of the reasons that I personally would go for the STL over an ST, the base model, is that you do get a 360 camera system and that's one of the cameras up there. It's pretty decent. It's very high quality. Let's check out the side. So one of the things this gets is an upgrade in its aerodynamics, of course. So you get some functional aero that sweeps air across the side. These are 18 inch wheels here on the STL. They look pretty good. And you've got some really thick Dunlop rubber there too. So you'll see this thing is actually really good on the road. And that's part of the reason why. We've got keyless entry and go. Your door mirrors also have another 360 camera there. You've got this scratchy material. I mean, it's so common on these SUVs, but this is the front wheel drive STL. You can get this as an all wheel drive. It's about a $3,000 optional extra, and that also nets you a third row of seats. So we've got the five seater front wheel drive, but probably the spec to get really anyway. You've also got privacy glass here, and you've got your roof rails, but otherwise it's a bloody SUV, Jacob. Just look at it. I am. Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about the back. So coming to the back, you get these pretty cool tail lights here. X-Trail badge, looks really cool in my opinion. Nissan badge, love that again. Got some stretchy plastic here and a roof spoiler up top. Otherwise, Jacob, I think it's just a pretty handsome SUV. I think it looks pretty sleek from the back. Yeah, I don't think it's my favorite. I think the Sportage is my favorite, mm. but that's personal preference to each their own. Let's check out the interior. Okay, so. The exterior is all about style, but if the interior doesn't have substance, then there's no point, Jacob, of it being so much more expensive than Totally agree. I'm happy to report it's really nice in here. I'm gonna leave it up to you guys in the comment section. Watch till the end of the interior segment at least, and let me know if you think that this interior makes up for the kind of lacking in other areas. But soft touch materials, absolutely everywhere that is really important because it helps to soak up road noise and doesn't reflect it like you'll find on scratchy surfaces which this car really doesn't have they've gotten rid of the stupid piano black plastic and instead replaced it with this fake wood but it looks really good which is really the most important part even here man look at that it's luxury soft materials for a almost base model you're doing pretty well 
the steering wheel is another one of those things. You touch it all the time. You want it to be good, and I'm happy to report it is like, honestly, probably best in class. So nice to hold on to. What it's not best in class in is its technology. So a car that will do it better across the range is the Kia Sportage, and make sure you go watch that video at the end of this one. But this screen here, it's an eight inch unit. You can get like a pretty wow factor, 12 point something inch unit, um, but they have essentially the same functionality, uh, quick enough. You do get wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So you're gonna be using that if you want navigation because this thing doesn't have it built in. But yeah, look, it's not the best. I'll leave it at that. Again, this isn't top of the range, so you don't get the full digital instrument cluster, but this is still actually pretty good. You can see plenty of information on it and the analog gauges work fine. So I really don't have any complaints about that. I love this shifter, man. It's nice and slidey. Yeah, it's like a shift by wire system. It just feels really solid, really premium. You get your drive mode selector down here, D mode. What does that stand for, Jacob? No comment, exactly right. Here you've got a 12 volt socket, a USB-C port, and a USB-A port. So if you're indecisive, you don't know what you want to use, well, use both. Use both. You've got a little tray down here. It's not a wireless charger here, but in higher models, it is. Storage is actually pretty decent. You don't get the biggest glove box, but it's okay. I love this though. This center armrest is so nice and soft, and it's so premium. Look, it's one of those double ones and has such a satisfying it's like a soft opening. Click, yes. And inside you get plenty of storage there too. The other thing I really like are the seats. So they're a fake leather in this one, but I don't mind that at all. They feel pretty damn primo. They've got this weird like, I don't know, Tetris pattern on it is what I want to call it. Probably not the official name, but they're really comfortable. You can get a really good driving position and we've done a few hundred kilometers today, Jacob. Absolutely. Very comfy. Electrically adjustable too. And heated. Shout out to this air conditioning control unit here. It's just super easy and functional, easy to use. I like it a lot in here, man. I love it. And personally, I think it probably has class leading build quality. Everything is so solid. It's pretty unreal. And one place you can tell that it's got good build quality is with the infotainment display. Often these are just tacked on units, but that is solid. It does not move. No one's gonna steal that. No one's gonna steal that. Well, they wouldn't want to anyway. <laughs> Let's check out the back seats. Okay, so what about the back seats? Well, interior quality does take a slight dip. This is scratchy plastic. Also notice that it's brown and black. It's across the entire interior. I don't know if I love it, but I'm okay with it, if that makes sense. This is all soft touch materials though, so it does still feel pretty premium, especially where you rest your arm. Look how much space I have, Jacob. It's too much. Unreal. I've got so much leg room. I have so much toe room and headroom is also really plentiful. I'm five foot 11. So I'm, I don't know. I'm really impressed. Usually you get space, but you don't get this much space in the back of a medium sized SUV. You've also got your air vents here. Nice on a warm day like today. USB-C port, USB-A port and map pockets. Check this out, Jacob. This is your center armrest and it folds all the way down. You get a couple of cup holders, a little phone holder and you have through loading there as well if you wanted to. So just smart packaging. As I said, this isn't the seven seat model, but you can get it as a seven seat. So let me know in the comment section if you want us to review that at some point. Probably the most underrated feature with this entire car, Jacob, what is it? Uh, the doors. The doors, the back doors open 90 degrees. So if you have a child and you need to put them in the back seat, it is so much easier to do. Look at this. That's unreal. It that is so wide. So wide, I could almost fall out. I like it a lot. Jacob, let's talk about the boot space. Let's do it. Alrighty, <coughs> Jacob, coming, coming to the boot of the X-Trail. This isn't power assisted because it's the STL, but you do get a huge opening here. You've also got heaps of room. Now, as I said, this is the five seat variant. You can get it with seven seats up until the STL, which is a bit weird. You can't get it on the TI or TIL, but anyway, you also don't have a four wheel drive system. It's just front wheel drive here. So that means that we get quite a lot more practicality. If we lift this up, we get a divider. You've also got your cargo blind that can live under there. That's pretty good. If we take out this cargo cover, yoink, look at this. I can put my backpack here and it doesn't slide around or I can put it on the other side, Jacob. Whoa. How cool is that? Very cool. Couple of other things too. If we want to have that and have some ooh, secret storage, we lift that up, we get 
a little bit of room under there. That's also pretty cool. Jacob, it, it continues my friend because under here you get a temporary spare wheel and shout out here to the sound deadening. That's how you kind of know that this thing is a bit more premium than other vehicles in its class. Like even the Toyota Corolla Cross, which is technically smaller but more expensive, did not have any sort of sound deadening like this. Very disappointing. Mm. Oh, how could I forget? You can also put down the back seats. Yoink. And Yoink. And look how much space you get, Jacob. Oh, so much. All right, let's talk about the engine. Jacob, I'm, I'm out of breath just looking at this engine, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> look, it's really not that bad when you're driving it, but on paper, it's pretty bad. So this is a large four cylinder. It's a two and a half liter. It's naturally aspirated, so there's no turbos, there's no superchargers, it's just the engine. Pumps out 135 kilowatt of power, 244 Newton meters of torque. Yes, it's up slightly in power and torque to the previous really outdated X-Trail, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not noticeable. In the car we have today, all that power is sent through to the front wheels. You can also, as I said, option all wheel drive, but I personally wouldn't. And that's because this engine just doesn't put out that much power. And as soon as you introduce an all wheel drive system, it actually loses some power. It's called drivetrain loss. In other markets like the US, you can get it with a one and a half liter three cylinder turbo that puts out quite a substantial more amount of power, even though it's smaller, but we don't get that in Australia. We kind of do, we have an e-power, which is a hybrid version. And let me know if you guys want to see that down in the comment section, maybe we'll review that one. But we're reviewing this one today. Let's launch it. Do we have to? We will. All right, friend, let's put the car into sport mode. We're going to brake boost launch it. Let's do this. Fist me. That's a lot of wheel spin. Come on. I love the fake gearing. Go fake gearing. Oh! Zero to 100 in 9.12 seconds. That's pretty good. It's not horrible. No. It's, it's just bad. Yeah. Cool. It's definitely a front wheel drive. It's definitely front wheel drive. Let's give it some sauce. Oh yeah. CVT. Here's the thing about the CVT, right? I would rather the CVT not pretend to have gears than to do this thing where it's like 6,000 RPM, 4,000 to 6,000. Just keep it at 6,000. That's okay. For people who don't know what a CVT is, it's like a band. Think of like a rubber band. Cones, they go like this. And so we can hold it at 6,000, but because us journalists love to make things feel real, we can downshift and we can floor the car, we can upshift, but it's all fake. Fake gears, people. Fake Just like the gears. fake news. But the paddle shifters feel very nice. Paddle shifters do feel really nice. And it starts to really pick up. Like, I don't know. I remember the Mitsubishi Outlander for which this car is heavily uh, shared with, thanks to the what is it? The Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi Alliance. So it does share a lot of the similar kind of driving aspects. So pretty good around the corners, weirdly. Uh, the anemic engine that it shares, it's actually not quite as bad here. I'm not entirely sure why. I would assume it's because it's probably a bit lighter. We don't have three rows of seats in this one, at least. Uh, it's just the front wheel drive variant, but you put your foot down and it makes a lot of noise, but- Kind of goes. Kind of goes. It's actually, Quite impressive. It's actually not bad. I love the refinement in here. Oh. It feels so refined. Yes, it is more expensive than pretty much all of its competitors, but it does feel more premium. 100% agree. I mean, the materials used everywhere is just premium. Premium. It's beautiful. And it's a really, really nice ride too. A bit of road noise, a bit more than I was probably expecting. And I'm definitely not gonna say it handles the best. That would still definitely go to the Kia Sportage, and you should watch our review of that after this one. But it's pretty decent, and we have our drive mode selector here. So let's put it into sport mode. Ooh. Ooh. Feel the steering? Uh, a little bit. I actually like the steering in this car, I'll be honest. Yeah, maybe it's like really good for around town, but when you're out in the twisties, it's probably a little bit vague, but that is perhaps nitpicking. It goes around the corners pretty well, actually. It really does. It's not supposed to be a sports car, of course. This is not this car's main use case. 
Uh, but it needs to be able to do that because a lot of Australians do drive on back roads. And... Ooh. Oh, 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 it's a lot going on. It's all happening today. It's a lot going on. Now, while we're stuck behind an extremely slow driver, comfort. It's Pretty good. It's really comfy. Yeah. I like it. All right, we are coming up to Saucy Corner. Friend, I don't have high hopes, but we're gonna do it anyway. I have very high hopes, actually. Can you tickle my little pickle? I can give it a bit of a tickle for you. Ooh. That's launch control, bro. Oh, it launched. It actually put, like, that is what I would expect of launch control, where it bounces off yeah. a rev limiter. Oh, we're gonna catch this Fiesta. Ah! Oh, come on. Come on, baby. Hey, it's doing all right. It's doing pretty good. I'm kind of surprised. Oh, I would have wow. thought that you would want the all-wheel drive, but perhaps not. Ooh. It doesn't have that much power, so you don't want that powertrain loss by having all-wheel drive. Agreed. Ah, uh, that was actually all right, man. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty good. Pretty good. All right, man, let's get into our final thoughts. Look, man, I, I thought I would hate this thing. It was more expensive than all of its competitors. It's got pretty bad engine on paper. I don't know, man, what do you think? I mean, I think the premium interior kind of justifies the price. Yes. I just wish it had a little bit more grunt. Yeah, a little bit more pizzazz. But yeah. let me know what you guys think down in the comments section and just below that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'd love to have you around. And click the link over there if you want to see our full written review of this car. And click over there if you want to watch one of our other reviews. We highly recommend it. We do. All right, Jacob. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.